11, hope you're doing well. It's the last one. It's the last West Ham transfer rumour show of the summer window. One day to go, 11pm tomorrow night, the window closes. And West Ham are now under a bit of pressure. There is pressure mounting. They've got to get some deals done between now and 11pm tomorrow evening. Uh, we'll speak about a couple of the big ones as we go along. But let's start with a breaking one. Nico Taliafico, um, the Ajax left back. Now this is just broken today that there's an agreement between West Ham and Ajax for the transfer of their left back for around about 12 million euros. Now the important thing here is the person breaking it. The person breaking it is very, very reliable for his um, haul in news, including breaking the news that Sebastian Allaire was going to Ajax from West Ham. He broke that news and he's breaking the news that West Ham have an agreement with Ajax for Nico Taliafico. Now he's a left back, very well known. Everybody's heard of him, a fantastic left back as well. And this is exciting. This is exciting news. This is another player with real pedigree in European football as well. It would be a bit of a coup for West Ham, I think. Link with Leeds United in the summer as well when they were pursuing a left back, but they ended up going for uh, Firpo Barcelona. But also linked to the likes of Manchester City. Now he is getting on about. He's no spring chicken, 29 years old now. A bit, bit of a hot hair, bit aggressive. However, a fantastic left back all the same. Defensively, they're really strong. Offensively, really strong as well. Now, do we need a left back? Not necessarily, if you ask me, because I'm a big fan of Aaron Creswell. I think Aaron Creswell is absolutely fantastic. But, with the Kurt Zuma thing, we saw us upgrade, in my opinion, our poorest player in the starting 11 when we play four at the back. However, if we were to play five at the back, Tomorrow, we would play five at the back tomorrow with everyone fit. The poorest player in the starting 11, one's opinion, my opinion, becomes Arthur Masuaku. And I think this would be an upgrade on him. I think this would allow us to play three at the back with Aaron Creswell there and have a really, really good player at left wing back. Also, when we're playing four at the back, it gives Aaron Creswell some serious competition. Because as far as I'm concerned, that is Aaron Creswell's position. Even with a fully fit Arthur Masuaku, there's no contest for me. Creswell starts at left back any day of the week. But this guy, he would give Creswell serious competition. But we'll get on to it in just a second. Just want to point you in the direction of our sponsors, One Football. Get it downloaded. You need to keep up to date with all the latest transfer rumours in the next 24 to um, 28 hours, however long's left the transfer window. Line the clock tomorrow at shuts. Get this app downloaded to your phone right now. Favourite who you want to follow and keep up to date with all the latest transfer news and gossip for your club as well as everybody else in the Premier League. Favourite the Premier League. Keep up to date with all the latest big stories, including... The likes of Nico Vlasic. But before we get on to him, let's just skip back to Talia Fico. Um, like I said, a person breaking it, very prominent, saying that we've done a £12 million deal with Ajax, but there's nothing, nothing agreed between West Ham and the players yet. And this is where it's a way to get a little bit complicated, because right now the player is in Venezuela. He's over there for international duty with Argentina. However, his agent remains in Amsterdam to try and get a deal done. So the sources are saying while there's an agreement with West Ham and Ajax, there's nothing between the player and the club, and it's going to be a little bit complicated. There's a big time difference as well. So West Ham look like they're up against it to get this one done. But however, if they do get it done, I'll be very, very excited for reasons I've already given. I think he's a massive upgrade on Arthur Masuaku. who would allow us to play a three at the back going forward if we wanted to. He would be an exciting, exciting signing. Now, what about Nikola Vlasic? Well, we all know about him yesterday. Have we spoke about him? The latest is there's not too much to update, although there has been confirmation. The Croatian national coach has confirmed that Vlasic is on his way to London to complete a deal to um, to complete a transfer for West Ham United. Obviously, it's international duty time. Admit it, he's in the Croatian squad. But the manager has confirmed he's on his way to London to get that medical done and to join West Ham. Perhaps more controversial, though. Uh, the manager also stated that he could have done with a better club than West Ham. Now, I think what he meant was bigger. Okay, I'm going to assume he meant bigger club than West Ham. And while when you first hear it, you think, "Oh, you leave it out? Who the hell are you?" When you remove your, when you take a step back and you calm down a little bit, I actually think it's a massive compliment to West Ham. Obviously, it's a bit of a backhanded compliment because he's trying to say that we're not as big as other clubs. But he's not, he's not wrong, is he? We're not, we're not in the Champions League or anything like that. And I think what he's trying to say, perhaps badly, is that Vlasic could indeed play for a Champions League club. He could go and play for one of the elite teams in European football. 
And that's got to be said is a bit of a coup for West Ham, I think. Both of these players would be a coup for West Ham. Um, I'm very excited about potentially signing Vlasic as well. Like I said, I still think we need one other attacker. We'll get on to him in just a second. But it seems that this deal is, while people perhaps would have liked to have heard a bit more today, it seems that this deal is going ahead, it is going as planned, and I expect that Vlasic will be a West Ham player tomorrow before the 11 o'clock deadline. Now, all about Jesse Lingard a little bit, isn't it? What's going to happen with Jesse Lingard? Because at the minute, not a lot. Sky Sports are reporting, just as I record this, that Manchester United are happy with Jesse Lingard to remain there and fight for a place at the club. But obviously, with Cristiano Ronaldo joining, they're also under pressure now. Man U don't have many squad spaces remaining. Actually, they have none. They have no squad spaces remaining. So there may just be room for Jesse Lingard in it, and that is it. There will be no more players able to join Manchester United. But... Is Jesse okay to accept this role at Man U? Which, you know, he's barely got onto the pitch so far. He, again, he, they needed a goal against Wolves. And they didn't score until late on. Uh, Greenwood didn't score until late on. So even when they needed a goal, he still didn't get onto the pitch. And that's without Ronaldo. And that's without Marcus Rashford. Um, things don't look too good for Jesse Lingard at Manchester United. So the question is, what's West Ham going to do? Either A, we stump up the cash, around about £18 million, I think, is what it'll take to get Jesse Lingard out of there. Or Man United will do a contract with Jesse Lingard, that gives him a year added on. And then West Ham agree a loan with Man U with either an obligation at the end of it so that we pay a fee next summer. Or we just take him on loan for a season. So it's all a little bit complicated. Jesse Lingard, I think, just is not as straightforward as it ever could be, really. Um, when we spoke to someone, when I spoke to someone... Ages ago about the Jesse Lingard thing, he basically told me, he said, Jesse Lingard will not get sorted until near the end of the transfer window, he said, because Man U are in no hurry to deal with Jesse Lingard, because they don't need to be. Man United could wake up tomorrow morning at 9am and think, we'll sell Jesse Lingard. By 11 o'clock tomorrow night, they'll have £50 million in the bank, and Jesse Lingard will be someone else's player. And that's been their sort of mentality all summer. We don't need to deal with Jesse Lingard yet. We can deal with getting Varane in, we can deal with getting Sancho in. Obviously, when he told me that back then, there was no such thing as Cristiano Ronaldo going to Man United. But he was basically saying they need to deal with the likes of Paul Pogba. Dan James also might be leaving Old Trafford. And if Dan James does leave Man United, I think that might mean that Jesse Lingard will almost be forced to remain there. But this is another problem. Man United believe while Lingard today might be worth 15, 20 million, in six months, in January, four months essentially, at the start of January, he's still going to be worth 10 million. He'd only have six months to go on his contract, so they'd have to sell him for whatever they can get, but they believe they'd still get 10 million for Jesse Lingard then. So for that 5 million extra, it's maybe worth keeping him as cover until Marcus Rashford's had his surgery and his back fit for Man U. So the Jesse Lingard thing isn't going away. One player being linked with today, which is slightly interesting, is Solomon Rondon. Do you remember him? That's a blast from the past, isn't it? He's disappeared for the last couple of years. I assume he's still playing in China. But obviously, he was with Benitez at Newcastle United. Went to China, and Benitez is at Everton. And he's been linked with a move to Everton as well. But West Ham are also being mentioned as a potential club for Rondon. Only 31 years of age, though. I thought he was a bit older than that for some reason. I used to love Rondon. I mean, I loved Rondon. Not quite Danny Ings, love. Not quite Danny Ings. But I I was, really was a big fan of Rondon. I would have loved to have seen him at West Ham. If it's the same Rondon as we last seen in the Premier League, I would love him. I would absolutely love him to join us in this window. But I have reservations over if it's the same player. Anyone that goes to China... Well, I understand it. It's sort of... I, th I just wonder what level they've been playing at since then, kind of thing. And it does it does put me off a little bit. There is good examples of players that have gone there, come back, and they're just as good, if not even better. But it makes me a little bit wary. One player, though, we will not be signing or be linked with all summer, though, is Sima from Slavia Prague. Um, he's off to Brighton for 7 8000000 million, which is... Quite low, isn't it? Um, I thought he was supposed to be worth double that, but it seems that Sima is away to Brighton, which would insinuate that he was never a serious target of ours, because you'd like to think, for that price, if we genuinely, if David Moyes genuinely wanted Sima, 
that we would make a move as well to try and get him to West Ham for that price. But it appears not. It appears we're going to sit back and let Brighton have a free run at him. A couple of other players we've been linked with and we will continue to be linked with tomorrow is Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Ross Barkley. Both look set to leave Chelsea perhaps on loan. We're being linked with both players um, as it stands as to bring in for a cover. Now both players... Five years ago, I'd have bit your hand off for either of them. I would have thought, yes, we'll have either of them. I thought Barkley was was not very good at Aston Villa last season. He just looks, his confidence looks shot. And I guess then that's sort of, I play my own devil's advocate in that as well. If David Moyes can get him confident, we'll see an even better Ross Barkley, like we did with Jesse Lingard and that. But I'm not sure Lingard was ever lacking confidence. I think he was just lacking game time on the pitch. Um, so that puts me off a little bit. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is one of those players that when he first broke onto the scene at 18, 19 years of age, you thought, wow, this guy's going to have a big future in the Premier League. I remember him bossing Declan Rice at Stamford Bridge. But he's just not, it's just not worked out, hasn't it? He's had his loan deals, even to the likes of Crystal Palace, where you'd expect him to be a big player. It was that Fulham. It's not really worked for him. And I'd be a bit apprehensive about either loan deal, if you like. Like I said, I think... The loans are low risk and I can get it. We're bringing them in for cover and stuff. But a bit of me would almost be a little bit... I think I'd rather see Oco Flex than, than Ruben Loftus-Cheek or something like that. I think I'd rather see us promote our own players from within. You know, what's the point of investing in all these 18 and 19 year olds and you're then going to bring in a 23 year old or however old Ruben Loftus cheek is and use him instead? I'd rather us use our youngsters from the 23s. Uh, but saying that, I wouldn't be disappointed. Um, I just wouldn't be doing cartwheels either. Issa Diop continues to be linked away to various clubs, including Southampton and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, I don't think he'll go anywhere. I don't think Diop will be leaving West Ham. And I don't want him to. I think um, it would be interesting. I'm hoping that maybe having Kurt Zuma around might just help him out a little bit, even if it is just off the pitch. He's then got a friend there kind of thing. Um, and I'm, I'm aware I'm clutching right now. But also playing in Europa League, because it's a different style, he won't be coming up against teams that are as physical as the Premier League, if you like. I'm hoping if he plays in the Europa League, that that style, that game suits him a little bit more and he can get in the team, because there's still a fantastic defender in Diop. Um, I've, I'm far from giving up on this to Diop having a future at West Ham. He needs to improve, of course he does, no doubt about it, but I want to see him improve at West Ham. Not at Southampton. Now, the last rumour we're going to discuss today is Mipo Odebeko. Um, in his last year of contract at West Ham, so we need to be a little careful what we do here. Otherwise, we're potentially going to risk him leaving for free at the end of the season. But he's been linked to a couple of clubs on loan, in particular championship clubs as well. Now, Mipo believes he should be playing first-team football. Perhaps not necessarily at West Ham United, but he's ready to go and play first-team football somewhere. And that might mean taking a loan move somewhere else in order to get that minutes on the pitch. I think he's also a little bit disappointed that at a club with only one striker, he's not really had much opportunity. Um, I can see both sides of the coin here when we have seen him, in, whether it's glimpses in pre-season or that cup at Man U. We've not really seen enough from him. We've not seen enough that says, get this guy in the team. But at the same time, he came here... He left Man United, he was offered a contract at Man United, he turned that down to come to West Ham with the belief that he was going to get game time. So I guess from his standpoint, his point of view is, well hang on a minute, I've come to the London Stadium to play more games, get more minutes, get an opportunity in the first team, I've not had that opportunity. So I can understand why he's not had enough minutes, but I can also understand why he expected more minutes, if that makes sense. Um, it's turning out to be a bit of a... So far, a poor transfer for Mipo Odebeko and for West Ham. And I just hope that we see, I hope that Mipo ends up doing something at West Ham. I hope in three years' time he is playing first-team football for West Ham. Because that's got to be the aim whenever you bring a youngster to the club, isn't it? The aim is he grows, becomes good enough and gets into the first team and save you a load of money. Um, but as it stands, it's, it's looking like he, he might possibly go out alone. But if not, by the end of the season, I think he'll be leaving West Ham, which would be a disappointment because um, to go to to put it into sort of without going into it too much, Mipo de Beko is sort of managed by the same people as Jesse Lingard, and I know that they've got high hopes for Mipo. They've got really big hopes for Mipo de Beko, and they're a bit frustrated that. 
he hasn't had more game time and they think he's going to go on to become a leading Premier League striker and they would like to see that happen at West Ham and I think they're a little bit worried that it's not going to happen at West Ham but anyway it's as simple as that really that's a transfer rumours now tomorrow's transfer deadline day so we are going to go live tomorrow evening from 9 o'clock until 11 o'clock we've got a two hour transfer deadline day show tomorrow night we will be having a chit chat about all things Premier League all things West Ham and it'll be extremely interactive so tomorrow night we've got nothing to do pop along hopefully we'll be celebrating a couple of new signings for West Ham as well and there will be at least an end to the Jesse Lingard saga he's either staying at Man U or coming to West Ham I mean he might go somewhere else but I can't see I think there's a right now I'm 55th I am 50 50 on whether Jesse Lingard is going to be a West Ham player on Wednesday morning or a Man United player anyway if you enjoyed this transfer rumor show drop a like on it subscribe if you're new around here make sure you download the one football app and I'll see you tomorrow